Conversations with God, Book 3, by Neil Donald Walsh. Chapter 3, page 58. Can we talk about this death business for a minute? You said this third book was going to be about higher truths, about universal truths. Well, through all the conversations we've had, we haven't talked that much about death and what happens after that. Let's do that now. Let's get to that. Fine. What do you want to know? What happens when you die? What do you choose to have happen? You mean that what happens is whatever we choose to have happen? Do you think that just because you've died, you stop creating? I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. Fair enough. You do know, incidentally. But I see you have forgotten. Which is great. Everything's gone according to plan. When you die, you do not stop creating. Is that definite enough for you? Yes. Good. Now the reason you do not stop creating when you die is that you don't ever die. You cannot. For you are life itself. And life cannot be life. Therefore, you cannot die. So at the moment of your death, what happens is, you go on living. This is why so many people who have died do not believe it. Because they do not have the experience of being dead. On the contrary, they feel because they are very much alive. So there's confusion. The self may see the body lying there, all crumpled up, not moving. Yet the self is suddenly moving all over the place. It has the experience often of literally flying all over the room. Then of being everywhere in the space all at once. And when it desires a particular point of view, it suddenly finds itself experiencing that. If the soul, the name we use now to give to the shell, wonders, gee, why is my body not moving? It will find itself right there, hovering right over the body, watching the stillness curiously. If someone enters a room and the soul thinks, who is that? Immediately the soul is in front of or next to that person. Thus, in a very short time, the soul learns that it can go anywhere with the speed of its thought. A feeling of incredible freedom and lightness overtakes the soul. And it usually takes a little while for the entity to get used to all this bouncing around with every thought. If the person had children and should think of those children, immediately the soul is in the presence of those children, wherever they are. Thus, the soul learns that not only can it be wherever it wants with the speed of its thoughts, it can be in two places at once, or three places, or five. It can exist, observe, and conduct activities in these places simultaneously without difficulty or confusion. Then it can rejoin itself, 
returning to one place again simply by refocusing. The soul remembers in the next life what it would have been well to remember in this life. That all effect is created by thought and that manifestation is a result of intention. What I focus on as my intention becomes my reality. Exactly. The only difference is the speed with which you experience the result. In the physical life, there might be a lapse between thought and experience. In the spirit's realm, there is no lapse. Results are in instantaneous. Newly departed souls, therefore, learn to monitor their thoughts very carefully. Because whatever they think of, they experience. I use the word learn here very use loosely, more as a figure of speech than an actual description. The term remember would be more accurate. If physicalized souls learn to control their thoughts as quickly and as efficiently as spiritualized souls, their whole lives would change. In the creation of individual reality, thought control, or what some might call prayer, is everything.